Hey there, YouTube Shrine. So in this video, we we'll take a look at comparing the i7-10700K to the i9-9900KF. You uh, may have seen from the channel, I've done unboxings, we've done a lot of gaming with it, FPS benchmarks, all kinds of things like that. Now, I previously compared the i7-10700 to the i7-10700K, and I've had a few people ask for one on the i9-9900KF compared to the i7-10700K. So that's what we're doing here. And in the video, we're basically going to look at uh, three different things, right? So price, and we'll look at some benchmarks. We'll look at uh, CPU user benchmark, Cinebench R20, and then also Intel's XTU. Finally, we'll wrap it up with at least three video games, uh, Fortnite, Call of Duty Cold War, and then Shadows of Tomb Raider the uh, benchmark that's inside the software and I may I may throw at least one more in there so that's what we've got folks and really the first thing to take a look at is price so let's go ahead and jump into that let me make sure you guys can see this I'm gonna have to move myself all right so i7 10700k you see the price there $379.88 this is a 8-core, uh, 16 threads, and max turbo is up to uh, 5.1 gigahertz, which you know means only, I believe, it's the first two cores that actually see that. Uh, and, of course, you can overclock this easily to 5 gigahertz, and uh, with a little more effort, uh, 5.1 gigahertz. So, that is that one. You need a Z490 motherboard to get the most out of it, but it will run on other 400 series motherboards. Now, here is the i9. Let me get the picture to stay up. i9 9900KF. It's uh, 8 core, 16 threads as well, and it will uh, run up to 5 gigahertz for the uh, turbo, which is, uh, once again, I believe just the first two cores. And you can easily overclock this to 5 gigahertz. So price is $379.99, so within 11 cents. So there's no advantage on the price. This does take a 300 series motherboard, uh, preferably a Z390, Z370. I uh, would not recommend the H310, B360, B365, or the H370. You will lose performance on this. So really, so far, we're at a draw. Let's go ahead and look at the benchmarks. All right, now we're going to look at benchmarks. First, we'll look at the i7-10700K. And I typed out uh, what it consists of here. Basically, we have the Noctua again, 140 millimeter single tower CPU cooler, the RTX 2060 Super, Zotac Mini, one terabyte added a SX6000 Pro. M.2 NVMe on ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard, 3600 megahertz of RAM, 16 gigs of that, power limit set to unlimited, no overclock. All right, so we'll uh, kind of fast forward through this. And this is Cinebench release 20. And voila. So scored out 4860 right here. All right, so that's important to note for later when we pull up the i9-9900KF. So next, we'll do user benchmark. And in case you're not familiar with this, this tests, you know, pretty much everything. The, uh, the drives, the CPU, the graphics card, the memory. And it's going to give us a score that we can compare actually a bunch of different scores that we can compare. So, first up, let's look at the overall gaming desktop workstation score. So, we'll note those for later, 107, 104, 106. Then the CPU itself, they have a bench score for it of 102. Single core, 146, quad core, 571 and then the multi core score 1555. Then finally, XTU. This benchmark is going to give it a score as well 3327. All right, so 
let's look at the i9 now. And i9, this one has the Cooler Master Hyper 212. So the only thing that would be uh, different and unfair besides the motherboard. All right, so once again, Cinebench release 20. And I'll fast forward through this. Boom, we've got a score there, 4894. So that is 34 points higher than what the i7-10700K got, which, you know, roughly puts it in the same ballpark. And, of course, neither one of these is um, overclocked and power limits are on. So let's go to the next one, which will take longer to scroll through. This is user benchmark. So from this, and one thing I forgot to write down was the background CPU usage, but it was pretty low. Huge difference here. We've got a gaming score 102, desktop 102, and workstation 106. So workstation is the only score that's the same. These other two are down. Uh, the 10700K got a 107, and the desktop score was 104. So uh, not quite as good there. Now let's look at this one. Now maybe we had a bad bench, who knows. This score, 96.8, is less than the 102 that the i7-10700K got. Single core score is actually higher. So this should mean probably that Fortnite's gonna run better, if that is accurate. Quads, quad core score is less. The 10700K had 571. And then the 64 core score is higher, 1575. So, you know, that should mean obviously certain other things will do uh, better with this i9. And let's go on to XTU. And this will give us a score here in a second. 32.45, so this score is actually less, but uh, you can see it got a lot hotter, and that's due to the uh, Cooler Master. Now, I don't know if we can see me running the mouse over it, but uh, power limit throttling and thermal limit throttling did not come on, so I don't know that uh, it would have been that much better off with the big old Noctua. But that's all I have for the benchmark. We're going to look at some uh, gaming now. All right, now we're gonna look at Shadows of the Tomb Raider. So this game has a built-in benchmark. So what I did is I ran this twice for each one. One was with no screen recorder or anything else going on, and we got some scores. And then I ran it again all the way through the benchmark with the screen recorder on, and we'll basically step through all this. So differences between the i9-9900KF and the i7-10700K this time, the i9 had the Cooler Master Hyper 212, and the i7-10700K had a uh, Noctua 140mm single tower CPU cooler. So, first run without the screen recorder, i9-9900KF got a 94, the i7-10700K had a 97. And basically, like I said, Here is the benchmark, and we'll just kind of roll through this quickly. And you could stop at any point here and see the benchmark or the FPS difference. Uh, I think I have it lined up relatively close. Hopefully, I'm not off by frame, but you can see, you know, the scores jump back and forth. But overall, the i7 10700K is does better. So we get to the end. And this this was running with the screen recorder on, right? So it's going to tax the uh, CPU and the graphics card a little more. We ended up with uh, 92 for the i9 9900KF. So it dropped down from 94 to 92. The i7 10700K dropped down from 97 to 93. So it took a bigger hit, but it still had the higher FPS. All right, so now we're gonna look at Fortnite. Once again, the i9's on the left, i7 on the right. 
This was recorded originally using a uh, screen capture software program. Now, to start this off, it uh, basically the bus, you see a huge lead here. And what I've done is I went in and used the magnifying device in my video software or video editing software program. And, uh, you know, I don't expect this to stay the same, but we've got 213 on the left and 126. Now, why is that? You know, lots of different reasons in Fortnite that the FPS will uh, jump all over the place. And this is just, you know, momentary thing. So let's jump ahead to about a minute. And I'm not going to do every minute, but we'll, we'll make some jumps here. All right, so you see here, things got a little closer. The left stayed in over 200, and the right is now at 210. So we've got close to an 8% difference. Uh, the i9 is leading, which is which is really surprising, right? Now, if we go to the two-minute mark, they've closed the gap a little, 224 to 211. Now I'm going to jump ahead to say four minutes. Now at the four minute mark, 216 to 204. So we're about 6% uh, difference as far as the FPS average goes. And if I jump ahead to the six minute mark, now things have gotten interesting, right? So, you know, with Fortnite, obviously, depending on what location you're in or how much action you're seeing, things can change quite rapidly with the uh, the FPS but you know it takes a little bit of time doing that for the FPS average to drop off and so now if we go all the way let's go to the end boom they're both at 203 so for Fortnite uh, at least in this situation it's a draw now if I played this 10 times would I get some different values most likely but uh you know, for this one example, it turned out they were both exactly at 203. All right, folks, here we're going to look at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And I have on the left, we've got the i9-9900KF. The right is the i7-10700K. And we have all the MSI afterburner stats. Now, one slight difference in this, I did start the... MSI Afterburner a little prematurely on the i7-10700K. So you see the max min numbers are uh, a little higher. Uh, but overall, you know, it didn't spend that much time in there. So this is pretty good comparison. Now, we start off, and this is basically only a second into the video. The average is 169. So I've, I've been playing a little bit. On the right, we've got 167. All these values are going to drop down a little bit. Another difference between these guys is the i9 9900KF had the Cooler Master Hyper 212 on it, and the i7 10700K had the much better Noctua 140 millimeter single tower CPU cooler. We did use GeForce Shadow Play to record this. Uh, with the i9 and then the i7 had Xbox game bar um, There may be you know some slight differences Due to that that might have affected the performance All right, so as we go through this you'll see the numbers, you know are changing the FPS on the i9 is actually going up 10 700 K is dropping down Now I'm just gonna hit play for a little bit so you guys can see this then we'll start to fast forward more towards the end but yeah i mean if you look at this this much into the video it would appear that the i9 is, is stomping on the i7 right so this is why when you do these benchmarks you know either got to do them for a long period of time or uh do quite a few of them and kind of take them an average amount you know take this as a grain of salt basically how accurate is one game of this compared to another game right um, so let's fast forward a little bit, say to the 50% mark. Now you see, uh, FPS average, they're, uh, getting tighter. 
9900 kfs at 166 the 10700k is now at 163 one thing that was a little surprising looking at one percent low you've got a much better number on the i9 for that than what is shown with the i7 uh, i'm not sure why that is it never really uh updates so You can definitely see the difference between the uh, CPU temps. Uh, both of these CPUs are, you know, just barely chugging along, right? The graphics card is, is uh, doing its thing. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit more. Almost to the end this time. So now you see the i7-10700K is actually taking over the lead on the i9-9900KF. Uh, you know, lots of things can factor into this, obviously, since this is in a built-in benchmark software. One could say, you know, that, hey, um, your gameplay, you know, no reason the same person, right? It's me, same lousy uh, Call of Duty gamer is out there, you know, getting killed. Maybe uh, a little more action happened on the i9-9900KF, but... I'd like to say, you know, watching these, that, that I played the game pretty much the same way. We used the same maps. Now, the, the guys I was playing against, on uh, one hand, they were much better in one of the games than the other. That, you know, that factors in. Um, so, let's go all the way to the end so you guys can see exactly who came out on top. And in this video, the i7 10700K just barely beat the i9 900 kf so now if i were to play this three times maybe ten times for each one of these you know the there would be some kind of range to the fps average uh averaging that out would probably give me a better idea of you know who is the superior cpu for this but uh you know overall uh this is a draw maybe the i9 900 kf might have did slightly better had i have you know decided to take off the Noctua CPU core and put it on the i9. Um, you know, possibly there's there's other things with the uh, Cooler Master holding it back, but that's about it for this portion. Hey folks, so hopefully you got something out of the comparison from where I was sitting is pretty much a draw. Now, obviously the price, same price, you know, within 11 cents. The benchmarks, pretty much the same across the board. Gaming, pretty much the same across the board. So what does that leave? Well, if you wanna talk, you know, future upgrades, with the i7-10700K buying a Z490, at least you can in the future upgrade to an 11th gen and keep your motherboard. With the i9-9900KF and the Z370 or Z390, you pretty much tapped out, right? There's uh, you know potentially one faster ninth gen CPU out there, but uh, realistically, it would probably be better, in my opinion, to go 10th gen because you can go i9 10900K, you can go i9 10900KF, or you know 11th gen comes around, i7 11700K, i9 11900K, and all the different variants. So. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe.